The Unusual Suspects Theater Company and the Virginia Avenue Project. And she got her B at her bachelor's in arts at Cal Poly in Southern California. And I think you're going to probably talk about your, she'll be sharing a, her experience in acting and talking a bit about like the importance of voice and how to bring out your voice. Because I find there's a lot of this area that you can yeah, specialize that's right. in here. Yeah. So, uh, and so anyway, if you guys please um, help me welcome um, Brittany. share with you some of my tricks of the trade. Um, getting into a, a voice acting is a whole, it's a whole series of things. We could maybe do a little voice warm-ups. But I have a quote here, and this is my quote that I wanted to share with you today. Um, and then we'll have a chance to do some actual like hands-on uh, exercises. Um, and I want to hear from you. So. Um, Digital Nest. So you, you guys all have participated at the Digital Nest? Yes. yes. And um, how long how long have you been here, all of you? Different amounts of time, I imagine. I've just been here to help out with the film festival, so probably like about a month. A month? Yeah. yeah. We're one of the original 12. Wow. So wow. How, how many years has it been? Four. Three. Three, 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 three or four years? I've only been here for a month, and I don't know. Well, I don't know. I've been here for months. Yeah? And how about you guys? Um, I've been here for like maybe six months. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I like come and I got on and off. Yeah. Cool. And are you, have you all been here for a while or is this kind of new to you? Uh, I've been here a year and a half. Yeah? Same. Same? Yeah. Just a couple months. A couple months. Yeah. This is such a cool um, place to be. Hi, Shad. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. This is Shad. Um, I know Shad. <laughs> um, so, uh, welcome. And I want to just talk a little bit about this quote. So, before we move on, um, I'll tell you a little bit about a story, like, about my journey as an actress. So, the most recent experience was War of the Limelight that we screened yesterday at the... Um, at the film festival, uh, War of the Limelight, and I would say as a high point, I felt really good in, in doing those scenes. I felt really free and, and able to express myself, and it was, um, I felt comfortable in front of the camera, which was one of the first times I really felt that way, and I'm 35. I started acting when I was like 18, and so it's been a journey for me learning uh, by doing over the years. But um, my lowest point was when I was living in Los Angeles, and I remember I was so distraught. I was hiding in a bathroom stall. And I was upset, I was crying, I was just like, oh, I'm never gonna be good enough. I, I really wanted to get this role. I was in the middle of a workshop series and we were, we were casting for this show and I just wanted to have the lead so badly but I thought, I'm never gonna get it and I'm so bad. And, and just beating myself up and wanting, feeling insecure and wanting others to tell me how I was gonna. I was doing great, and that yes, you can get the role. And I, I was seeking outside of myself for that recognition and, and security. So then, I think what happened more recently um, wasn't maybe until a few years ago was that I really realized that it was my own thinking, my own limitations of myself that I needed to break through and to be able to become more confident in front of the camera. So. 
it wasn't about um, anyone else telling me I was good. It was about me recognizing and seeing me as valuable and seeing my type and my, my abilities and then being able to express them. I have all these notes. You see them are a little, I'm like, uh, you have yours all typed and I'm just writing oh, yeah. all these things down. I want to make sure I kind of share with you all the different things I wanted to give you today. <laughs> <laughs> see? Some, some, some words are in bold. <laughs> So, I, so it reminds me on, on what on what to do, so I don't have to read every line. Just yeah. Like word. But word I, I'm all I'm all about <laughs> writing it in pen and scratching it and circling and so so it's great that I can have a sense of humor about this is like my type. This is the way I do things, and that's the way he does things. And we're married, of course. This is my husband, um, and we teach together as well and make movies together. Um, so today, I thought it would be good to uh, talk about this quote and how does it apply to acting and um, daily how I've had to break through my fearful thoughts and my limitations and how they define me and that I can feel the fear and do it anyway. And um, so perhaps this is a good time to practice and talk. So I wanted to have us maybe turn to the person next to you and discuss what you think this quote means and how it might apply to acting for you. So I'll give you guys a minute to just chat with each other and see what, what do you think it means? Like there's no wrong, right or wrong answer. I just want, and then we'll share as a group what you think it means. Like as an actor, you're always like switching roles. Like you're not tied down to one person. Like you're just like not tied down. You're free. Like you get to play all these different roles and explore like the different worlds that you that you have. And you're just not tied down. You're free. You can mm -hmm. just roam any world that you want. You okay. shouldn't be just trying to do one genre or style. You should be able to know. Oh, you know, you should just be focusing on one. But like, exactly like you said, you're free to do all. Of them, you know? Cool. Good. That's good. What else? Is there anything else that you thought of? I heard some good things over here. Um, I took it in, in a different way, not not as a like career mm -hmm. type of, of a thought, but more as an individual. Mm -hmm. um, just I was thinking about how um, some of us try to really fit in, and but to, to realize that we can't really fit in because each one of us is our own. We are your own unique puzzle piece. And so we really can't fit in anywhere. I love that. I love that puzzle piece yeah. metaphor. That's beautiful. I would like to add to that. Yeah. Um, I'm putting together a community-based magazine mm -hmm. 
and there's never in history in our area a magazine such. Mm -hmm. So I was looking different magazines that filter through here. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, which this magazine's like, which one? I said, well, <laughs> there's never been done. <laughs> and now That's it's right. been, it's almost a year, uh -huh. and it's going to be born on, November, on December 9th, 8th. Mm -hmm. So it's like finding like, oh, which, which, which is my puzzle? Well, I'm the piece to the new puzzle that's unfolding. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, the uniqueness mm -hmm. that each human being in this planet we have. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what's going on out there, what's in here is going to reflect the glow. And that's where we are all one. Yes. You can teach the class. I think we're all good now. <laughs> that's good. No, I think we can go home now because that's exactly where we were going. I thank you so much. That's so awesome. Thanks. I love how you explain that so beautifully. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Um, and, and that's where I was hoping it, this would go is that as an actor, and what Maya Angelou says, I didn't quote that, but she says at the end, I am Maya, and I belong to Maya, and I love Maya. And I was like, oh. <laughs> That's just like the most beautiful thing. So I am Maya, I love Maya, and I belong to Maya. So if we were all to take that essence of this, and that, yes, we try to fit in, we try to think, oh, to be an actor, I need to do this certain thing, or act this certain way, or, um, you know, there's other techniques that have you go back in time, where you, there's like the method acting, where you have to pretend and remember like a core memory from your childhood and then and it's a whole different method that uh, it works for some people and um, but I believe and I truly uh, understand this to be that cinema and film they need all types they don't want you to fit that same that we've seen before they want you they want to see your true essence come through in your performance and even though if a character is written in a script and it's a certain type uh, you can come and be look that type because we all have different looks and you can dress the part and you can uh, Say the lines how you think it needs to be but if you really take this quote to the fullest extent You're allowing your own uniqueness to come through with every line that you say So I want to practice that today. We're actually gonna get to do some fun stuff because this is acting and We're not gonna sit and just talk about it. We're gonna do it. So um, the first exercise I want to try is um, introducing ourselves. And so I'd like you to stand up, and uh, we're in a safe space. Um, introduce yourself confidently. And that's the first thing. And then we'll, we'll do an exercise, and we'll do it again. So, um, so that's the only direction, is to stand up and to introduce yourself confidently. Would you like to go first? No. Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. My name is Mike Buffa. Good. Anybody <laughs> want to go next? <laughs> I'm not going to give you feedback, but just yeah. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to all get up and we can all. Yeah. Are we going around? Or yeah, we, we can. We can. Around? We can go popcorn style. Whoever want, feels like they want to go next. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dana Forsberg. I'm Jerry. <laughs> Hello, my name is Olga Puentes, and I am very happy to be here with all of you. Hi, my name is Francisca. Everybody knows me for Chela, and I'm glad to be here. What's up? My name is Tyson. Um, yeah. Tyson George. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mayra Ruiz Valtierra. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris Lloyd, and I'm here on part of the Digital Fest. What, what's my motivation here? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of work right here. Like, like am, I, am I a criminal? <laughs> uh, my name is Josue, and um, I'm also happy to be a part of this class. Hi, I'm Domingo Martinez. Hi, my name is Bless, B L E S S. And yeah. Hi, I'm Marissa, and I'm happy to be here today too. Okay. I'm Diana 
Brennan? Uh, hi, I'm Shad Brown. about how that felt to stand up and say your name. What did, what feel, what did you feel in your body? Anything? In your mind? What were you thinking? Anything? I it was kind of funny. Yeah? You what? It was kind of funny. It was kind of funny. <laughs> I, I heard nervous laughter, nervousness. It was, it was what would you, would you say? Yeah, I said nervous. Nervous? And how does nervous feel to you when you feel nervous? Uh, I would like to uh, say that even though I've been saying my name, I'm 40, I'm going to be 47 years old, just the feeling the butterflies again, I love that because that makes me, you know, be pre like I'm present and I'm alive. And that's the beauty of my passion to be here. So it's just feeling those butterflies, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else feel butterflies? Yeah. Yeah. And we're in a small group, you know, we're all here together, everyone's nice, you know. But even me, like, I'm like, my cheeks are hurting because I'm smiling so much. I'm like, I gotta smile! <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm, I'm, even though this is a master class, I'm still, I'm still growing and learning every day. And being in front of you doing this makes me even nervous, right? And I feel a little bit, does anyone feel like their heart kind of gets, you feel a little warm or your heart starts to race a little bit? Yeah, it's, that's natural, right? Okay, so we're gonna practice something that I like to call centering. And so um, when we deepen our breath, and I'm also a yoga teacher, so when we deepen our breath, what happens is um, our, when our breath is shallow, we have this, our thoughts are like fight or flight, like, I'm not safe. That's what happens, our brain goes, I'm not safe. So when we deepen our breath, we're, allow, our, we're allowing the mind uh, a little bit of a time to just get a little bit quieter and more centered. So it's called pranayama in yoga. So um, if you can just find it, like yourself all the way back in your chair and let your feet be on the ground. And this is one of the techniques you can do standing or sitting, it doesn't matter. But if you just let your arms just gently rest and relax your shoulders. So bring your shoulders up towards your ears and then just let them drop down your back. And then close your eyes just for a second. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes. And then we're going to practice pranayama, which is deep breathing. So soften your feet on the ground. Feel like your feet are connected to the, to the floor. So notice your feet. And then soften your face. Soften your jaw. So just notice if you can allow your muscles of your face to just let go for a minute. And then we're gonna take a deep breath in through the nose. Deepest breath in. And long breath out through the mouth. So this time we're going to take a deep breath in and count to five. So inhale on your nose. One, two, three, four, five. Take in more air at the top. Hold the breath. Take in a little bit more air. And then exhale through the mouth. So this time we'll do it again. Five count. One, inhale. Two, three, four, five. Hold it at the top. Take more air in. Through the mouth, exhale. So this is a round of five. We'll do two more. Count in yourself. A count of five in through the nose and a count of five out through the mouth. Go ahead in your own time. keeping your eyes closed, bring one hand to your heart. And so when you connect your hand to your heart, know that there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just being centered in yourself. So I am me, and I belong to me. So taking the focus from outside of ourselves and bringing it inside, feeling our feet on the ground, relaxing our back into the chair, Continuing to relax the body and the face. 
and then imagine there's a line in, in your body all the way from the top of your head going all the way down through your body down to the ground and imagine this line is like a, the color red like a red ruby red line like a pencil going straight up through the crown of your head down through the center of your body connecting your heart and your belly all the way down in between your feet and there's no doing or forcing this to be, just imagine that you are centered and connected. Connecting down into the earth, into your heart, and up to the crown of your head. And then you can relax your hand and then gently open your eyes. So now we're going to around, go, we'll go this way. <coughs> Stand up and say your name and um, try it now confidently and grounded. So we tried confident and grounded now. So, hi, my name is Brittany Buffo. Hi, my name is Chris Lopez. Hi, my name is Myra Louise Voltier. Hi, my name is Tyson George. Hi, I'm Domingo Martinez. Hi, I'm Josue Sanchez. Hi, my name is Marissa Upson. Hello, my name is Blas Romo. Hi, my name is Diana Hernandez. Greetings, my name is Diego. Oh, hi, my name is Shad Brown. Hi, my name is Chela. Hola, my name is Olga Montes. Hi, my name is Justin Ortiz. Hi, my name is Diego. Good afternoon, I'm CJ. Hi, I'm Dana. Hi, I'm Mike Buffo. So, Anything we've noticed, the difference between before and the second time you did it? There's no right answer. Just wondering if you noticed anything different. Felt more relaxed. Cool. I was, uh, I felt more connected to what I actually wanted to say. Ah, uh -huh. cool. Anyone else feel the same way? Felt like more, like, less, I, I didn't hear any giggling that time. It was interesting. So this is, a, this is a very introductory, like, you know, what we're doing right now, and it might be different, something you might not have done before, um, feeling grounded. So when you allow your feet to feel like connected to the ground and you kind of bring your attention outside yourself and bring it inside, that's one of the key things that actors do, especially when they are on set and there's a million people around. I mean maybe not a million, a hundred or so, and they're all doing different crew things and they're all trying to make sure that the, the machine is working, that the, the film is the best that it can be. And the actor, once you're in your position and you have to deliver your line, everyone's looking at you. So if you're not able to really be centered and grounded, it's hard because it's like, your nervous energy is outside. Do you feel, do you notice when I'm, I'm kind of talking in like energetic terms, but it's, that's what acting can be when you start to practice it more and more and you realize that it has to come from inside out rather than outside in. So that's my number one first thing that I always teach and um, about grounding and, and being centered. So I have a little handout that I made for you and we're gonna do something on the back as well. So I have one for everybody and you can take one and pass it around. But, so on the front you'll There's see... Two yes. Oops. Oh, is it front and back? Yeah, front and back. So the front one you'll see this little person and the line of energy. And then on the bottom you'll see this, all the different words. So that's what we call ARA, and that's what we started our company. It's an old term, it's from martial arts. And um, do you want to share a little bit more that's about the fun. origin? or that's that's great. Okay. So HARA stands for Heart Aligned Response Access. And so if you look at that, you'll see the different qualities. So when you practice 
getting centered with your breath and in your own heart, you realize that you can be neutral, receptive, non-judgmental, not only towards yourself, but to other people. Present, relaxed, I heard someone say relaxed. Uh, humble, receptive, connected, honest, energetic, rooted, peaceful. So all these wonderful things, and if you practice it, my challenge to you is to notice when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling like, oh no, I'm not good enough, or oh, I, I wonder what people are gonna think of me if I step onto the stage and I have to say this thing, or I have to give this presentation, or you know, in front of a group of people you don't know, or even if it's just having to introduce yourself to someone for the first time, maybe on a blind date. <laughs> like, this is something you can take with you in your everyday life to just take those five deep breaths, count into a count of five, inhale, exhale, and then imagining this quality of coming into like a center space. So that's my first thing I wanted to share. Um, anyone have any other feedback or questions about this part? So we're at 2.30, good, we're at good timing because I have one more thing I want to share with you. Um, the next thing is about charismatic performance. So um, has anybody noticed performances, has anybody been on camera and have performed on camera and have watched themselves on camera before? Awesome, great. So tell, tell me a little bit about what you noticed, some of your judgments about watching yourself on camera and anything you feel like, oh, I want it to be more of this or more of that. Any, anything that comes to mind? Well, you just notice, like, after you see yourself on camera, you notice the things that you could have done and the things that you shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. Do you have any examples of, of those things? Um, I don't know, maybe sometimes, like, a part that you're acting, mm -hmm. you're like, uh, when you're watching, you can, you're like, oh, I could have, like, made it more of a mistake, or mm -hmm. it was a little too much, so you gotta, you know. Okay, good. A little more realistic. Does anybody else? feel that way? Like, oh, I wish it was more like real or felt more like, um, it's the word I wrote down, uh, believable, right? That word believable. Anything else? What do you guys notice about your performance? Sometimes things are, things that you, you're doing sound, sound better in your head or like they come <laughs> off as, and then you watch it back and like, that's not good. Not <laughs> what I thought I was saying. <laughs> it's surprising. Yeah. Well, how I planned it in my head, right? Yeah. Good. Anything else? Well, that's good stuff. Sometimes when I do a dance on video and I watch it, I'll look at my face and I'll be like, damn, I really look like that. <laughs> so I feel like my facial expressions are like, they don't really fit. They don't fit the, the performance? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. It's all good. This is all good material to start with. Good. So uh, I felt the same way a lot of times watching my performances, going, oh, I had thought I had. I had planned it in my head a certain way, and then when I see it, I go, oh, that wasn't what I thought was coming across, right? So there's a little disconnect. And so there's that stiffness. Have you ever noticed, like, sometimes your performance seems, like, really rigid and stiff? And you're like, oh, man, how come I can just relax a little bit and kind of be in the flow, right? Um, so the secret is to stop watching yourself. I know, it's weird, right? So we're amazing creatures that we can be aware of what we're doing and do it at the same time. Like animals, they just do it and they're not thinking about what they're doing because they're not aware of, like it's, we have this consciousness, we're aware of what we're able to do and how we're doing it and we perceive ourselves. So when we're watching ourselves, what I mean by that is like when I'm in the middle of something and there's a little part of my brain that's going, judging me for, you know? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Like that little voice that's like judging you for the way you're doing it while you're doing it. <laughs> that little voice. Okay. So in real life, when you're really doing something, so for instance, there's a stimuli, like we're driving and someone cuts us off. We don't think about how we're reacting to that, right? <laughs> someone cuts us off in traffic or they flip us off or whatever. What's probably your first reaction? You get mad, you're like, hey, you know, what are you doing, right? And it just is natural, it just comes, because you're not thinking about it. You're not coming from your head, you're coming from your heart. You're coming from your, like, reaction, right? Right, so um, there's this awesome thing. So if you flip your page, there's this thing called push, pull, stop, and allow. And so 
This is something you can play with and have fun with. So I, I started introducing this in a lot of my acting classes. And it's kind of an introductory. So I'll give you an example. So in the, in the, in the movie, I say, uh, Oprah said it, so it's true. So I can say that line in many different ways. And depending on what my partner had just said to me as well in the scene, I can react to that authentically based on what I just received. So um, the line that was, you said, uh, look at what I... I said, you're the strongest woman that no, I've ever met. The Oprah line. Before the Oprah line, oh, you said remember. something like, um, yeah, well, look at oh, what yeah, I've look, done. Oh, yeah, look, I made a film that nobody's ever seen. And I said, oh, well... And so the way I chose it in the movie was an allow. And I was like, well, you know, sometimes God's way of, it, uh, what is the line again? Our it? failures are oh, God's way of yes. leading. So, well, you know, sometimes our failures are God's way of pointing us in the right direction. Oh, and Oprah said it, so it must be true. So that's like a very much like, it's just, it's just allow. Like, okay, it's, it must be true. So I could have said it many different ways. I could have said, well, you know, our failures are God's way of pointing us in the right direction. And Oprah said it, so it must be true. Okay, that would, what do you imagine that is? Which one is that? Kind of like messed up. Like, <laughs> you should know. Like, like you should like, know. How do you not know this? How do you not know this? What is it? Push or Push. stop? Push. Push. That, yeah, so I'm like, I'm using more of like my forceful, overpowering, I know more than you, and I'm stronger than you, and I know more. So, right? So, Oprah said it, so it's true, okay? So, I could say it that way, okay? Or I could try it a different way. I could say, well, Oprah said it, so it must be true, right? So, that's a little bit more smug <laughs> and like, hey, I'm like, like a little bit. Let's guess. What is let's that? Let's guess. Pull. It's a little bit more flirty, Pull. right? Pull, right? I'm drawing my, his energy towards me. Like, I want him to come towards me. I'm not pushing him away from me like I wasn't pushed. I'm pulling him towards me. So, um, so Oprah said it, so it must be true, right? That's a little bit more pulling energy. Or it could be, or it could be, oh, well, you know, Oprah said it, so it must be true. That's like, pull as well. You know, like, guys, come on, right? There's pull, okay. Or I could have tried it in another way. There's many different ways to do it. I could have said, well, Oprah said it, so it must be true. That's yeah. stop. Yeah, there's so many ways to play with a line, and this is simple. It doesn't require you to do a whole bunch of homework on the character and go, what is the character? <laughs> It doesn't require you to do that, right? Isn't that fun? I just love this method. So you can take any line and any character and you can choose how each line can, and then even in the middle of a line you can change it. So I can start with push and go, well, Oprah said it, so it must be true. I mean, there's so many ways to do it, okay? So what I'd like you guys to try is we're gonna take a line and it's what's for lunch. And I want you to just play around and have fun, because acting is playing and having fun. So play around with what's for lunch, and maybe if you find someone, a partner, and you want to try it with each other and try different ways of saying that line, and we're gonna, I'll give you guys like two minutes to just play, okay? Okay, so what's for lunch? What's for lunch? Do you want to do it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, it's okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, so you want you want to be my partner? Okay, so go, I'll start. Okay. What's for lunch? 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 Oh, yeah. What's for lunch? I think we got it. 
Yeah, so you can push out. What for lunch? Thanks. And the, what makes a charismatic watchable performance is the more a character changes from moment to moment. So in real life, um, a character can change their attitude very quickly. Like, I want you to be really close to me and then get away from me, right? That happens sometimes. And when you're in the middle of a conversation, it's like, oh, things are going really well. And oh my God, stop it. Like, you know, it happens in real life. So if we want to be more believable, more realistic, it's about trusting not your head because you're not coming from a place of thinking and like, oh, I gotta figure this out. It's just being trusting yourself. Like, I know how I act in everyday life and it doesn't mean that you don't practice and of course that there is character development and you talk to the director and you get feedback from the director. You have to be open and changeable. But it makes a more charismatic, watchable performance, right? So if we take this to a scene, so let's do two of our lines. The line was in the movie, you are the strongest woman I've ever met. And I cut him off and I say, Paul, this isn't the time. So in the movie, do you mind standing? I want to kind of stand and do it. So in the movie, um, did anyone see it, by the way, yesterday? Yeah. Or the limelight? Cool. I'm glad you guys got to see it. It still needs work, but we did it. OK. So. <laughs> So in the, in, the, in the scene, you know, he comes to me and we have a history. And so I'm like late for work and I'm just like, okay, what do you want, right? You are, this, you are the strongest woman I've ever met. Paul, this isn't the time. You're the strongest woman I've ever met. Paul, this isn't the time. You are the strongest woman I've ever met. Paul, this isn't the time. Strongest woman I've ever met. Oh, <laughs> this isn't the time, yeah. right? <laughs> Depending on what he gives me, I'm gonna give him something different back, right? So in the film, like he was giving me something, and I was like, oh, stop, stop, stop. There's so what was that? Was that Paul? And did you get see the reaction? The reaction is because I we ch I shifted. Yeah. And it's that's that's the lesson is that it's the shift between push, pull, stop, and allow which makes magnetic performances, just to change from one to the other. All right, and I could even push back if I felt like right. that's what I was receiving. I could go, Paul, this isn't the time, right? I could push him back, and then he would react differently on his next line. But I give myself permission to have the range of, of emotions and the range of qualities of saying the line, because every take is a new opportunity. So this is the last nugget that I want to give you guys, especially as you take any of this going forward and making short films or anything that you're doing is that as an actor, every take is a new opportunity. So if the camera's set up like this and it's a wide, I can do it in the wide a multiple different ways. And then when the director sees all the different ways, or maybe they have something in their head, they're like, ah, oh, I want it to be, like, especially if you have a director who knows this and is speaking this language, I want more push. So then you try it and push, but then you want to try something new, so you try it again. And then they decide to go in for a close-up. So then you have all those different ways, and the director can say, I really liked it in push. And then you do it push in your close-up. But you can do it multiple different ways. Every take is a new opportunity. So that you're never always doing the same performance every take, because you never know what the director or the editor would like to choose in that moment. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's beauty of movie making, isn't it? I love that. So um, especially as a director, when I can have an actor and I can say, hey, um, try it differently this time. I want to see more pull. And then they can take that direction and they can, they can go with it. Um, but this is one of the many tools. So let's try one last thing. And it's going to be now partner. You're going to have a line each. So um, partner A and partner B. And then you can switch. Partner A, you're going to say, it's 2 o'clock. And partner B, you're going to say, let's go. And so play with how you say it's 2 o'clock and the partner says, let's go. It could be many different ways. So go ahead and try that for a few minutes. It's 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock.
It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. Go. It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. Let's 
see what we got. It's two o'clock. Might as well go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's nice. So he added a little bit of flavor to that. So what did you see? What energy did you see? Like their, what's it called? Like their expression towards what they said. Was it push, pull, stop, or allow? Allow. Uh-huh. Push. Were you in push? Yeah. You were in allow? I saw allow. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Let's just go. <laughs> Whatever. I'm up for anything. That's like very much allow, right? Yeah, let's go to the beach. Let's play. Let's have fun. Good. So are you guys getting a sense here. of each one? Sure. Yeah, it's so fun to play with. And um, thank you for being brave and doing this in front of us and trying it in this little class. Um, so with our last 10 minutes, um, the last few things I wanted to share. So this is for you to keep. Um, please, um, I invite you to use them. So practicing Hara anytime you're feeling stressed, fearful, insecure, or wondering what other people are thinking of you rather than seeking approval outside yourself, going inwards and being in Hara. And um, push will stop alone. Now this, um, Mike wanted to announce what we're, what we're doing next. Yeah, and, um, so we're having a party for Halloween. Ooh. And uh, it's a costume party. It's down in Monterey, if any of you get down that neck of the woods. Uh, it's going to be at the Moose Lodge, which is a big, big kind of community center across from uh, on Highway 218 and 68. It's in Monterey. In Monterey. In Monterey. There's the address there. If you want to look it up. But uh, we're going to have a costume contest like, of those categories, and you can win prizes. Uh, we're going to have DJ and dancing. It's for all families. We're going to have some appetizers. There's a full bar for those of you who are older than 21. And we're going to have a virtual reality experience. So we're going to have a VR headset set up with some demos for people to experience that, probably for the first time. Sounds uh, else. And unless, you, and I think some of you have, have, raise your hand if you've ever done virtual reality, if you ever put one of those headsets on. And was it here? Yeah. Was it here? Okay. It was my first time like two weeks ago at my friend's house. And so I, I was like, let's do this at the party. So <laughs> I, we, made, we put it on the flyer and published this. And so uh, it's, it's only $5 for people under 18 and $20 for adults. And all the proceeds help with our organizational budget. And this, this event really is about having a good time and, and, and uh, getting our community to meet and meet each other and learn about Hara a little bit, but really just have a, have a good old time Halloween. I've never had a Halloween party, and Halloween's my favorite holiday. So I'm really excited. I'm 34, and I'm finally having a Halloween party. So we're going all out for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. You should come to downtown Santa Cruz on Halloween. Yeah? Really? Oh, I've been to stuff like that. I, Sam, I went to San Francisco State, and San Francisco and Castro District on Halloween. It's a Absolutely. dangerous place to be. Yeah. In a good way. <laughs> um, so, oh, so, so yeah, we have those. And then about Hara, we have um, upcoming workshops and things. Oh, and uh, we have a Stay Connected form. If you want to stay connected Bring your friends. to me and Mike. So uh, Mike is going to go next with his filmmaker lifestyle workshop. So if you... No, you don't. Um, he's going to go next, and then Mike. I'll be there. And Mike, our kids are going to be minions. I have two kids, and they're five and three, so they have minions costumes. You have one and one eye, and one What did you say? Oh, yeah, I know, I know. So, um, keep in touch. It was Miguel Teron. Was, was never he never acted in anything before, and he uh, went through the training we did, and he made the film with us. He starred in the film. He was Brock in the film, and now uh, from there he took the work and the experience, and he applied it, and he been auditioning in Los Angeles, and he got cast in a television pilot. He did it. He, he Banner. Yes. Because he did the audition remotely from home. For yes. The video. Wow. His, through some of the clips from the movie, he took the clips sent in his submission online. And then they were like, yeah, we really like you. Come to the, they came, he went to an in-person in audition oh, first. Yeah, and then they cast him. 
But then they cast him, and then they sent him to New York, and he started, he filmed the whole pilot, and now it's going off and doing its thing. So it's just one of the cool success stories of someone who's taken this work and, like, really taken it all the way. And so, the final yeah. It's called Gone, right? It's Gone. G O N E. As opposed to Gone and Gone. I'm gone. so glad to see you all today. Thank you for having me and letting me be and play with you guys. So, yeah. Thank you so much.